marketing results. The more you know who your customer is, what he or she does, and how and why they make decisions, the better you can personalize your marketing and get better results. This sounds very straightforward, but how to get there? The answer lies in blending cognitive science with data science. Dave Kelly, the CEO and the founder of Analytics IQ, is here to talk us through all ins and outs. Welcome, Dave. Good morning, Ronald. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So can you share why successful marketers use predictive analytics to improve their marketing? Sure. Um, well, there's only so many things you can know about individuals. So most things have to be predicted. And um, so again, you know, a best practice in marketing is doing the best job you can to understand your prospects and hopefully um, potential customers. Yeah, and I was mentioning in the intro already, um, you have an exciting combination of expertise, I think, from both data science and cognitive science. So what magic happens in marketing once you start blending these two? Well, it's been a journey for us. And uh, about five years ago, we started taking a close look at cognitive psychology. So it's not what people are, it's who they are. So traditionally, marketing is focused on things individuals can't really change about themselves, such as their age, or their ethnicity, or gender. Um, and we've started to take a closer look at what's really inside, like what's driving decisions by consumers. And you were mentioning it already, it's who your customers are. That's very important. And most companies start their marketing by using customer data and enriching this with probably their own website data or the order data and all different kinds of data they have in, internally. Can you share some stories from companies that started to use external data in their analysis as well? Uh, well, sure. So if you think about it, um, when you see a new prospect, let's just say on Facebook, you really don't know much about them. Anything you do know about them is great. You know, we call that first party data. But the reality is, if you're going after new potential customers, you don't know much about them at all. And that's where we come in. So we focus on the drivers that consume, or what actually, what need a consumer has. Like, what need or do they need to have met um, by the particular company? So, for example, um, we work with a large nonprofit, a children's cancer charity, and their message resonates great with everyone. But the question is what resonates best? What actually prompts action? So in this case, we can look at consumers and say, okay, what need are they satisfying inside? And it's something you can't know, you can only predict it. And it's difficult to predict it. And that's why we have cognitive psychologists on staff so that we can actually take a look and say, okay, here's a need that a consumer has. Here's how a particular um, company can satisfy the, that need. And let's look from a data point of view. You can collect data from many different sources, um, internal and probably structured data, but also unstructured web data, for example. So what type of data is valuable for data science teams? Well, I mean, any data you can get that actually um, is known data is great, but as the world changes a bit, especially as privacy becomes more and more of a concern, um, you really have to look externally. In our case, we focus on public data, so not even web data, census data, public record data, to use as sort of the cornerstones of predicting other valuable things. So again, this is the type of data that's always going to be available for, to marketers, but also corresponds with the changing world in terms of privacy and regulation. Yeah, I think the, the third party data and external data uh, delivers a lot of opportunity for, for many marketers. Dave, thank you for sharing your insights, full experience, and also how to benefit from blending both data science and cognitive science. And for the audience, Thank you for watching and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, Ronald. You're welcome.